Good afternoon, good evening, good night. I will wait for a few of my friends to come online before I cut and light my cigar. And uh, it takes literally two to three minutes for everybody to be informed. And uh, as you recall that I made a story yesterday and uh, to explain that, you know, I will be live uh, at this time. Good day. Uh, hi, Jobo. Good day. Amazing. Good to hear from you. Uh, before I light up, I would like to give a little uh, details on the cigar which I have in front of me. So I believe that it always is. Uh, you know, as far as the cigar aficionados and cigar lovers are concerned, uh, you always would love to see that uh, what's in your hand for your fellow cigar lovers. You always wanted to see that, uh, oh wow, you have, the, you have these beautiful cigars with you. So every time we open a, a humidor, every time we open a, uh, a travel humidor, we always have this beautiful thing, oh, I opened this and what do you got? You know, it's exceptional, what do you got? It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting thing to see by others. I do the same. When someone opens a humidor, I, op I wanted to search in, oh, what are the beautiful things you have in that humidor? I hope you are hearing uh, my voice perfectly. Uh, I'm in a beautiful place. As you can see that this is not Dubai. Uh, it does not have the colors of Dubai, but then it has different colors, right? Uh, these colors are a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more uh, harmonious. I'm not saying that Dubai does not have it, but normally when I do the live in Dubai, it's always in... Um, in a setup of a balcony or a cigar lounge. Uh, this is really natural. So uh, this is India. Uh, I'm in India today. And uh, this is India and southern part of India, uh, which is Kerala. And I am lighting up a cigar uh, in Kerala. So since the, the joy of being here and lighting up a cigar is very special to me, and uh, I have brought some uh, wonderful cigars with me. So starting from uh, left is a wonderful uh, Trinidad Fundadores, we all know. Uh, my favorite cigar, my Hombre Aguano request, uh, many details. So that is a 40 by 192. That is a Fundadores. That's El Encero, the famous Cohiba Encero from 1966 uh, blend. And that's a Monte Cristo Especial, the same size of Lancero, uh, but from the Monte Cristo family. Um, and then you have a Hoyo de Monterrey double Corona. Now, and also you have an Achupman Monarcas, which is from a very, very old period. So I will introduce one by one. So that's a beautiful Trinidad Fundadores. And that's what I'm gonna smoke. If you're asking me that what I'm gonna smoke is I'm gonna smoke the Fundadores, uh, giving that exceptional love affair to the God's own country. And that's a Cohiba Lancero, uh, a beautiful, beautiful Monte Cristo Especial, and a Hoya de Monterey, and an Achupman Monarchas. Now, let me close this. Uh, it's time to light up. We, I only have one hour because Instagram and uh, YouTube, you only can have one hour. I'm also simultaneously live in uh, YouTube, so I'm gonna mix and match the questions here and there. Uh, it is hi everybody from YouTube as well. Hello everyone from Instagram. And uh, if you have any questions about the cigar journey, the cigar etiquette, uh, any doubts on cigars, this is the time that you can talk to me in live because no, mostly I do a question answer segment in uh, Instagram and I tend to answer many questions, but these days the questions become too much. Uh, I'm getting around 150 to 200 questions and it's really impossible to write down all these questions and answers. I would love to. However, I'm taking time, so I will answer five questions in one day and another five questions another day. So I find it really interesting to probably uh, be live with you and then uh, get your questions in. And absolutely, that will be a one-on-one -on -one session. You will appreciate it because you are hearing it exactly from my mouth live. So if you have any questions, please do ask me 
all the Instagram lovers as well as the YouTube lovers. Now, uh, my first question comes from uh, YouTube world. So let me let me pull that out. And can you have alcohol in that part of India? It's eight is uh, Mark Minim, Mark Mark Green. Absolutely, yes. If you're interested to have uh, alcohol, definitely you can have alcohol. Uh, it's totally up to you. Uh, but then I'm not drinking alcohol or anything. I'm just smoking a cigar. And the automobile gallery, very beautiful cigar. And you look, thank you very much. Uh, I, I put a little bit of effort in making myself green, connected with the green nature. So it's time to light up. And I'm using a very simple cutter, uh, a Habanos cutter. The reason why, um, this is very important. The reason why I'm using a very simple cutter, not because of uh, I don't want to use a fancy cutter lighter. I like every cutter and lighter. So this is a gift from Havanos in Cuba when I went recently. Uh, in India, uh, they confiscate lighters. So last time I came with uh, my Ellie Blue cutter and lighter. I managed to get back my cutter, but they confiscated my lighter. I don't know, something happens with Ellie Blue, I would say, because uh, I've been losing Ellie Blue uh, lighters in the <laughs> in the water, and then I'm losing Ellie Blue uh, Ellie Blue cutters in the water, Ellie Blue lighters uh, in the customs. So this time I come with uh, the most exclusive lighter of La Casa Lavano and a simple cutter of uh, Habanos. Uh, this is the cutter that uh, made one of my video more than 500 million views because it was a simple cutter, and I was teaching how to, uh, how not to cut cigar in this manner. So, as usual, uh, as you all know that Trinidad is having a beautiful pigtail, Trinidad Fundadores. So, you cut exactly where the sharpness of that uh, cap is, where the cap meets the wrapper. So, I'm doing a very precise cut and that's the beauty you get. Beautiful cut. The cap is like a little hat. Uh, I don't want to call it as a cap because it looks like a hat to me. It's curvy, it's covers, it's a hat of a cigar, you know, easy. So, oh yes, um, here somebody asked me a question that I just saw a question here. It just went up. Let me scroll it back. Oh, you have a lot of questions coming in. Thank you very much for asking uh, questions. Okay, let me go back. Let me go back to Instagram first. Because Instagram people, uh, they tend to be bored faster than YouTube people. Tell me if, if I'm wrong. Uh, smoking a Partagas mill floors or aristocratic cheers. Uh, Jobo, lovely to hear from you. And which place? Uh, it's Kerala, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into cigar questions because that's more priority here rather than the place itself. Hello, bud tender. And here we go. How many years have you been smoking? I have been smoking for more than 22 years. Cigars alone. Okay, I don't smoke shisha. I don't smoke cigarette. Uh, I don't smoke any other stuff. It's just uh, pure cigar. And it's almost 22 years. Uh, is there any traditional cigar brand in India? In India, there are some traditional cigar. I don't call it cigar brands. Uh, but there is a thicker cigar version in India, uh, which uh, back in the time, people used, to, people used to smoke those. But I don't call it cigar, because the difference between those tobacco and the Cuban tobacco or the Caribbean tobacco, I would call it, uh, Dominican, Nicaraguan, Honduras, all these tobacco, which is different. Uh, the black seed tobacco uh, is what the Cuban tobacco uh, made the exceptional flavors and pleasures. So when it comes to Indian tobacco that's made and cultivated in a different manner, it does not require humidity. It does not have the same fermentation and aging techniques as the Cuban seed tobacco. So the Cuban tobacco, you require to keep the cigars in the humidity. You can't simply keep it outside. Uh, you, we all know that when we have a cigar, if you don't keep it very well, it damages immediately. So uh, Indian tobacco, you don't have to have that kind of humidity. Definitely not too much heat, but not too much humidity you require. So, but there are, uh, I don't call it a cigar, I call it uh, raw tobacco rolled. 
uh, you can you can find that in India. I just uh, okay here, uh, Mohammed Jabur. I just start smoking this. Uh, what you advise? Which brand the best for me? Uh, what brand is be best for you is depends on what you are looking in a cigar because a cigar is smoked for three different reasons uh, one is its flavor one is its strength one is its aroma so the beautiful part is that most of the cigar lovers they smoke for all the three elements together as a marriage now if you're looking for strength alone that is a different phenomenon and if you're looking for flavor and aroma alone that's different why because all the cigars has these elements, but imagine if you like a stronger cigar, then you need to look into the strong cigar blend. So if you're looking for flavorsome cigar, every cigar has it. However, you can start your cigar journey with a Hoyo de Monterrey or Polar and Niaga, uh, a wonderful uh, achievement, a little bit stronger than the rest of the cigar, but it's still in the light and medium body. Let me take the first puff. beautiful as it's supposed to be right that is the trinidad fundadores now uh moving to the next question i just asked smoke which brand of cigar okay i just answered you the questions uh, why is it so hard a uh, cigar effect why is it so hard to find bigger ring gauge cuban cigars in dubai or do they just go quick there are thick cuban cigar uh are available in dubai however it just it just goes so quick from the shelves so you got to put your names with the team and uh, next time when you get a San Juan, a Rio Seco or a Medio Siglo, you will be the first one to know. And try to be uh, there in the shopping, you know, every week. So you will know what's coming. You will know what's in there. Most of the time you are you are very, very lucky to get a beautiful Tico Gay cigars. But you're right. Uh, comparing to three, four years ago, you don't get everything thick. But the beauty is you are able to find good cigars in the thinner ring gauge, you know. While I was traveling, I found a box of uh, Partagas Coronas Especiales. Uh, it's, a, it's a 42 ring size and it's, uh, you know, I, I really don't want to miss it and I took it and that is a beautiful cigar. People forget to smoke this kind of cigar these days and that's the reason. Don't look into only thick ring gauge cigars. It's time for us to relish thinner ring gauge cigars too. Look at me, I'm smoking a 40 and uh, it's a beautiful cigar. I'm moving up. Uh, are machine roll cigars in the past long filler or short filler like the Punch, Exquisitos and Hoyo? Okay, wonderful question. Lou um, MCM, MCM. Uh, see, when Cuba Tobacco had moved to Habanos Oficial, there were 1994. There were many cigars made, mostly from Partagas, uh, Hoy de Monterey, and Romeo Julieta brands. There were many, many cigars were having machine-made, uh, machine-made cigars in cellophane, and most of them are short filler, and they are not long fillers. And when Habanos took over from Cuba Tobacco. The Punch Exquisitos is an exception because uh, it was not exactly mentioned it is short filler or long filler. But all the cellophane cigars, most of it, because I can't say everything because there are so many which I did not even see or even documented, okay? We are talking about uh, 70s and 60s. But most of the cigars which is documented uh, comes in cellophane, which is 99% of the time, which is a short filler. The reason why it's short filler is also because you can't really make uh, a full filler cigar in a machine-made format and sell it cheap. A full filler cigar, handmade, is expensive comparative to the short filler machine-made cigar. So it is short filler. It's not a long filler uh, machine-made. Exceptions are there, but uh, generally. Uh, hi, I'm from Brazil and it's very difficult to find Cohiba. Where can I buy it uh, to be delivered to Brazil? I'm sorry that, you know, you gotta, you gotta find your right distributor in Brazil, which is La Casa Lavano and the Emporium Cigars. They will have it. 
And the shipping cigars also is not a great idea that it can actually kill uh, the flavor. You know, it depends on where you are. Brazil is the end of the world. And imagine if there is a product shipped from Switzerland, it reaches like in four or five days, the cigars will lose its humidity and you cannot enjoy the real flavors of it. So it's better for you to get it from Brazil itself. Are you coming to visit Australia, the Cuban cigar, the Cuban room? Yes, sir. The best opportunity next time I'm there. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit to YouTube now because we have a lot of viewers from YouTube. They're asking many, many questions. Uh, so let me go back to YouTube. Uh, Automobile Gallery, good evening, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I ate this Magnum. Can you have alcohol in the part of the India, which I answered already? Uh, a very beautiful cigar. And yeah, thank you. Uh, Thomas is asking me something in French. Uh, I'm not, a, I don't speak French. So, cuando feres vos votre juez conocers. I have no idea. I think that you're talking about doing a course for cigars. But you can do a subscription and we can do a course program. I'm working on it. You will see soon, okay? Thomas, I'm going to get back to you. You never reply back about my help. And I don't know, Oidi. I don't know whether you messaged me in YouTube uh, about a help. Tell me what help you like to have and I'm very happy to if it is in my reach. Uh, old, your name is Old. Uh, let me know please because I don't know you send me a message, a comment, I have no idea. So please do let me know. Anyway, do you smoke, do you smoke New World cigars? Yes, Thomas, I do. Uh, I, have smoked, uh, I have smoked recently a wonderful cigar. A, Arturo Fuente short story, it was wonderful. We had a cigar event in Abu Dhabi and uh, we, I smoked a short story. Uh, I received a gift from one of the gentlemen who interviewed me recently and uh, that was a Placencia. And there are, there are many cigars which uh, in my possession which I have to show. Normally I don't publicize much but then I do smoke uh, non-Cuban cigars, mostly to learn because if you don't smoke uh, non-Cuban cigars, how can you know it is good or bad? You all, always have to try and taste all the cigars in the world so you can be better with uh, the details. You know, otherwise when you are in a group of uh, people and then it's asking you that have you tried uh, this particular cigar and you don't know what about it because you did not smoke it, it's not right. So you want to call yourself a person that you understand cigars, then you definitely have to smoke many cigars. Um, what else? I'm Korean and I like cigars. Uh, your, po your poem is healing by watching the video. Your poem is... I don't know what that means. Uh, he's from Korea. Uh, your poem is healing by watching the video. I think it's a good thing. Thank you very much. Uh, Usman Khaled, why do you think about um, Villager Number no. 7? Great cigar. Uh, you know, something lighter. It's not something... I did not, I don't recall number seven is what size, but I believe it's a lighter body cigars. I know Henry Villager, uh, I have met him many times in Cuba. So it's a great cigar, you know, a, a cigar coming from a person like him. He has put utmost uh, knowledge and flavors and details to it. So I don't know, I, I smoked, I don't think I smoked it. So I can't tell you exactly how it feels, but it looks like a good cigar. Uh, 22 years ago, um, 22 years ago, uh, did you, did you start when you were, uh, okay, uh, Roda says, 22 years ago, start smoking, did you, did you start when you were, uh, <laughs> when you were five, eight years old, you look, uh, you look, you are in your mid twenties, that's what cigar does, my friend, so you smoke good cigars, you look younger. Okay, let me jump into Instagram now. So, uh, another cigar question. Is Trinidad triple fermented like Cohiba? If so, what are the differences in quality? Uh, A.K. Munifi. A great question, brother. And when I'm smoking a Trinidad, uh, it's, perf it's a perfect question. So Trinidad is not triple fermented. Trinidad is only two fermentation. It has only two fermentation, like rest of the cigar brand in the world, in, in Havanos. So, Except Cohiba, none of the cigar brands, none of the cigar lineas goes an extra fermentation. 
So the extra fermentation is uh, exclusively only for Cohiba cigars and all Cohiba cigars, and the third fermentation in uh, oak barrels in El Legito factory. So Trinidad is only two fermentation, but it is a wonderful cigar. It's tasty, it's very unique, uh, it's special for me. And uh, Trinidad is one of those cigars made in very far away from uh, Havana, which is uh, in the factory of Trinidad officially is in uh, Trinidad itself. And uh, the factory produces many Vitolas. And one of the cigar sizes which you can exceptionally be made in Pinal del Rio is a Fundadores. So in Cohiba factory, you, you, you prepare the Lancero, which exactly look like the same, but it's a difference is just two uh, ring gauges thinner. The Lancero is a one, uh, 192 by 38 ring size, whereas this is a 40 by 192 uh, millimeter in length. So you can, you can find the Trinidad exceptionally special because it's been made in a different manner. It is very unique. Uh, if you ever get a chance to smoke a Fundadores, you should try that. Uh, Jaden Benedict Rosario, tell us the story about your first cigar. Would love to hear it. Uh, I have mentioned it many times. My first cigar is uh, a Cohiba Coronas Especiales, uh, which is a shorter version of a Lancero, um, which is still a 38 ring size. And it was gifted to me by one of the personnel working in the cigar industry from uh, Altadis at the time. And uh, he gave me the cigar and at that time I don't smoke cigars. I don't smoke anything. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he gifted me the cigar and he told me that let's go for a smoke. And he had this Guayavera and he had three cigars coming out. All of them are uh, Cohiba Corona Specialis. And he just gifted to me and he said that uh, let's smoke. And I don't even know how to cut the cigar at the time. And he, you, he looked at my face and he said that I don't understand. I was very young. And he told me that, okay, let me, let me teach you. So he's the person who taught me in the beginning that this is how you cut, this is how you light. In my natural opinion that, uh, you know, I'm thinking, why do, I, why do I have to cut? What makes the difference, etc., etc. I coughed, I inhaled it naturally. And uh, the thing that made me crazy for that Corona Specialis is the aftertaste of the cigar uh, when I went back to the shop. And I was feeling that, wow, the aftertaste of this particular product. I did not know what tobacco can give. I did not know that what tobacco is made of, what is the speciality of it, how many years it's been fermented, aged, I have no idea. But then the aftertaste of that tobacco connect me with the food I know, connect me with the aromas I know, and I started to explore more. So he gifted me one to cut and light immediately and one uh, for me to take away. I smoke it after some time. But I have smoked that gifted Corona Specialis in multiple intervals, not in one go. Uh, I would be very honest because I smoked it. And uh, I keep it in the ashtray and I went back and I think about it. I go back and I relight it. So it took me a couple of hours to finish the Corona Specialis. And that's my first cigar. So, wonderful story. Uh, if you have any questions, do ask me more. So that's from... That's from Mr. Jaden. And uh, how many cigars you smoke a day or a week? Uh, Radwan is asking me how many cigars. You know, sometimes I don't want to count. Uh, it's nice to know. It's nice to know to know how many cigars you smoke. Uh, it's nice to just simply smoke when you feel it. I would say that uh, a day, one to two, and multiply by seven days a week. So we're talking about, you can say more than 10. Uh, less than 20, you know, uh, that kind of number, unless you're going for a special event, unless you're going for a very unique uh, program. Because when you go to a particular event in the evening, you tend to smoke two, three, four cigars. It depends on the event you're at, it depends on how, what is the size of the cigar, it depends on where you, uh, who you hang out with, etc., etc. Is the dinner involved? Many things. So you can average, put uh, 10, 10 plus and below 20, an average. Red one, thank you. So thank you, bro, for your knowledge. That's Junaid. Uh, thank you, Junaid. Enjoy, brother. Uh, Max is uh, wishing me uh, an enjoy. Uh, you like Robina, old port pilot. You like Robina. Uh, they have the they have the three things. They have the three things. I don't know what what do you mean by three things, but I love Robina. 
my uh, one of my favorite Vegas Robina cigar is a discontinued cigar which is known as uh, Vega Robina Don Alejandro, which is a double Corona, a uh, very big cigar. It's a 49 ring size. They discontinued it in 2017. Uh, till today, my favorite cigar from Robina. But Robina has many other cigars still in production. For example, the wonderful Unicos, like a pyramid shape, like a Monte Cristo number two cigar, look like exactly the same, but, uh, but slightly richer than Monte Cristo, I would say. And the flavor is very unique. And that's the beauty of Vega Robina. Vega Robina stands out for its strength and flavor. It's completely different than the rest of the cigars. Uh, for this reason, many people love to smoke a Vega Robina because it's a very unique taste and it's good value for money. You know, it's a wonderful cigar which comes with a wonderful value. Uh, you can find a Vega Robina Famosus, for example, for as good as $10, $15 uh, if you find them. And Don Alejandro is no more, but Unicos you can find for twenty dollars as well. So it's a it's a it's a good cigar for good value for money, and uh, it's not like uh, you know it's something very special about Vega Robina because Vega Robina many people they think that Vega's Robina Alejandro Robina created this blend. It does not mean that he's still preparing it. It's the brand name is under Habanos, so Habanos prepared the blend and the production. So they continue the same blend, they continue the same taste to what uh, Alejandro Robina brought it to the, to the brand, but it does not mean that it's only made in uh, you know, a particular factory or a particular, uh, they choose the leaves from particular vineyards, it's Habanos end of the day. So many cigars have uh, an exceptional taste as it is. Ramalan Mubarak Hermano, Mohammed, thank you very much. Which is the most expensive cigar? A wonderful question, brother. Uh, the most expensive cigar today is the cigar which is under the auction in 2024, Cohiba Himidor, that was sold for 4.5 million euros. So if you do a math, it has only 500 him cigars. So that's the most expensive cigar I know. <laughs> As a single piece, if you divide uh, that 4.5 million euros worth of Himidor, uh, divide by 500, of course the Himidor has a value, it looks like one of the most expensive cigars. And, but I don't know, your question might be the most expensive standard production cigar. Mm. One of the most expensive standard production cigar which you can find in the market today is a Cohiba limited edition, a Cohiba Victoria, the site's name and the Cohiba 55 limited edition of 2021. Uh, this is the one of the most expensive. It has, a, it has a special release known as Premier, and that is also very expensive, comparative to the Anniversario. And also Siglo de Oro, uh, the Year of Rabbit cigar from Cohiba for the 2023. Uh, that, was, that was expensive. I mean, this is still available in the market. It's approximately uh, 25 to 30,000 dirhams uh, for 18 cigars. So I believe that that is an expensive cigar too. What you can find. Okay, let me jump into YouTube. Uh, all right. So let me go back to a uh, few details to YouTube. Hola amigos, I'm back in uh, the YouTube side because anyway, it's, it's the common thing because you learn from the questions from YouTube to Instagram and Instagram to YouTube is the same because we all are, we all are here to uh, enjoy and educate ourselves. And Okay, Usman Khalid. Uh, after Usman Khalid. Uh, thank you for Zail. Thank you for your comment. So cigar questions. Hello everyone. Hello, great brand. Uh, have you ever tried Indonesian cigars? Yes, I tried an Indonesian cigar uh, lately because I received a gift from one of my friend and uh, he gave me a cigar and I tried the Indonesian cigar. It's very unique. It's very special. The Sumatra seeds, uh, it gives a wonderful taste to the complete flavor of uh, the overall balance of the cigar. And I believe that is very exceptional, something very unique than many other cigar brands because many people think that the Indonesian cigars uh, are not part of the Caribbean world of the cigars 
So what happens in Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, and Cuba, you have many cigars made in those islands, but then people think, oh, Indonesia is a very different island, a uh, very different place, and your, their cigars are not great. But believe me, the cigars are good, their seats are amazing, but there is no comparison. There is no such thing as comparing. It's about, you, you have to connect the cigar with as it is, and that's it. You cannot just compare an apple to a banana. So don't compare Indonesian cigars with, uh, you know, a, a Dominican cigar or a Cuban cigar. You have, to, you have to be in the spectrum of that particular blend. So if you look into that aspect, Indonesian cigars are exceptional. So try and then you will feel by yourself. What is your best cigar? Um, Abdul Rahman Matar. My best cigars are the one I'm smoking, which is a Trinidad Fundadores. A very unique cigar, very dear to me. Uh, but it does not mean that I don't like other cigars. I do love Cohiba and Trinidad as a brand. I do love many cigars from both the cigar blends. So if you look into the Trinidad, let's say my favorite is Fundadores. However, I have so many beautiful cigars within the Trinidad family, which I love. Uh, an example is uh, a beautiful Esmeralda. I love it, it's thick ring size, 50 ring size, and I like it. And say, same goes with uh, a baby version of uh, Fundadores, which is Reyes. Uh, Reyes is the same ring size as 40, but it's a, it's a shorter version of it. So I do prefer many other cigar selections within the brand. However, my favorite all time, given a point, if you ask me that uh, tomorrow I'm going to die, and what is a cigar you want to smoke before you die, and that would be a Trinidad Fundadores. That's my point. Mm. It's a dual flame. Uh, this is an interesting question. Is a dual flame and torch DuPont light is good for cigars? An interesting question. You see, uh, if you look, if you're talking about the dual flame, uh, it's a DeFi. It's a DuPont DeFi. So DuPont DeFi, Extreme DeFi or DeFi, there are three varieties on it, if not more. So two to three flames on a cigar. If you are very careful on how you burn the cigar, how you toast the cigar, how you light the cigar, then any lighters are fine. Unanimous of double flame, triple flame, uh, soft flame, match boxes, uh, anything. The, the key here is to be far away from the food of the cigar. You cannot be so close. You cannot be so close. So I will demonstrate you. So, let me tap the ash. I come prepared with a so how do you tap the ash, right? Because this cigar is not ready to be tapped in the meaning that uh, I can tap it or continue, but I don't want it to ruin my dress. So what do you do? You see, I was about to do a little touch and it fell because I can feel it's gonna fall. So remember this, you always have to pay attention to your cigar. It's like your fine woman, it's like your fine lady. You make sure that uh, she have enough attention. Even when you're going outside and having, you are on the phone or you're whatever it is, you have to pay attention, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna cut it. So when you light a cigar, like this, it's not good. This is too close. You can see it's splashing unless there is a lot of wind, right? Because you are outside, you are in a windy atmosphere, so you have a problem. When you, when you light a cigar, the best cigar, best way to light is this angle. I hope you can see. This angle is the best angle. You have more control on rotation with your, with your fingers. You have more control on the flame. So when you do this, you, you're burning the inner leaves too much. The lijero burns so much. So what happens? It changes the complete flavor. It does not have the right strength. You kill it. So all what you can do is, you know, be far away, be far away from your lighter. Far away, be far away. You rotate your cigar so that it's charged very well. If you do so close, it's not good. So you can use any cutters and lighters. Uh, sorry, any lighters, uh, double flame, triple flame, soft flame, match boxes, cedar spills, no problem. Make sure 
it is burned so slow, it is toasted so slow, and then you keep rotating it. This movement, learn this movement, learn this movement. This is beautiful movement. And that's how you can literally rotate the cigar. This movement is what makes the lighting perfect. And take your time. It took two and a half years minimum to reach the cigar in your finger, between your fingers, between your lips. It does not kill you for a few extra minutes to burn them. So what makes a triple fermentation special? Uh, Bada is asking what makes a triple fermentation special? The triple fermentation, first of all, in order to have a cigar blend goes with the triple fermentation, the, the cigar leaves should have a particular characteristics. Why? Otherwise, any cigar leaves can make into triple fermentation and make more money. That's not the key here. Fermentation is all about balancing uh, the tobacco leaves, right? The fermentation is all about maturing the leaves. The fermentation is all about cleaning the leaves. Uh, it is actually cleansing the leaves from his harshness. Uh, the, if the mineral composition of a particular minerality is much higher, the fermentation uh, hallow it down, it becomes smoother and well balanced. So fermentation is uh, a purpose which is made for this. Imagine your cigar leaf is not strong, meaning it does not have big characteristics. If you do the three fermentations, the cigar will look like a piece of wood. It does not have any flavor. It does not have any aroma because you washed it too much. It's same like, uh, how would I put it? How can I explain this? Uh, it's same like uh, when you wash a food ingredient, okay? So I don't know whether you hear it, but let me, let me tell you this. When we, when we are young, there are certain kind of uh, food ingredients you are not allowed to wash for a longer time. Because if you wash it too much, you lose the flavor of it. You lose the taste of it. You lose the aroma of it. So you don't wash it like in a, in, a, in a super shower, you know, you don't wash it. You keep it, just clean it a little bit and that's it. You wash it too much, you lose the fa flavor. Same with cigars. If you do too much of fermentation, I'm not talking about micro fermentation here, I'm adding water, the moisture. If you put too much of fermentation, the leaves lose the character. So what do you have to understand? The third fermentation is only allowed to certain tobacco leaves. So the master blender have to carefully pick the cigar with that kind of character characteristics in the tobacco and that you go with the third fermentation, makes it special. If you do the fourth fermentation, maybe it's bad, right? Just for the research purpose, I'm telling. So every cigar won't be possible to do the third fermentation. The Cohiba leaves are at most in perfection because they choose the leaves way too in advance. They prepare it, it goes through the fermentation, 45 days if not more, and then that balance between uh, that humidity what you get inside the oak barrel and also the aroma from the wood completely enhances the flavor of the Cohiba cigars. And that's why the third fermentation oak barrel is very important. Of course, you can put a Monte Cristo blend in it. It will come out something else. However, maybe it's not the right thing to do because when you do that extra fermentation or extra washing or extra whatever, it will kill the flavor. Or there are nuances of certain hints. For, ex for instance, you have a hint of a cafe and it, was, it is there in the Monte Cristo blend if you do a wood fermentation, which is oak fermentation, you may lose the coffee, something else will come out. So you don't want that. You wanted the third fermentation to be in utmost balance. And this is the reason that uh, not every brand goes through third fermentation. And also the, the constant difficulty uh, in, this, in this production. I imagine with third fermentation itself, Cohiba is uh, not even enough in the market. And also if you have Third fermentation goes with every cigar brand. It's going to take years for it to come out. Also a problem, right? Another 45 days. So the triple fermentation is special. It cannot go with every cigar blend. Um, thank you very much for Zail. I like your uh, videos and attitude. I like it. Thank you very much. Uh, you are looking like a boss. Uh, brother, every, any cigar smoker is a boss. So the moment you smoke a cigar, you become a boss. Okay, so smoke cigars. You are a boss too. 
how would you rate a Nicaraguan and Dominican cigars? Uh, see, the rating of a cigar comes from principal, principal characteristics. The first thing is whether this cigar is tasty for you. This is the first and the foremost thing. Is this cigar tasty? What is tasty means? Tasty means it has a wonderful flavor, a balancing strength, not just super strength, balancing strength, a great aroma, a perfect construction, and a wonderful aftertaste. I want to go back and take one puff. I don't want to be like, I take one puff and I'm like, oh, it's too much. I have to, I have to uh, crave for it, puff after puff. And that's what we call a good cigar. A good cigar, when you rate, you, you give these details. The flavor is this much number. The strength is this much number. Aroma is this much number. The construction is this much. Overall, you have a 90, 98, 99, whatever it is, collectively called as the best rated cigar. So rating is like this. So if I, if I look into the details of the Nicaraguan and Dominican cigars, how would I rate? The same way of I'm rating any cigar in the world. It's not that the Nicaraguan cigar and Dominican cigar are a special rating system. Uh, it is still a perfect way of uh, rating, same as any cigars. You rate exactly the same without conditions. If you do conditions, it's not a good rating, right? I'm thinking in my, in my mind, I'm imagining, oh, this is a very special Cuban cigar. It's coming from the Cohiba factory. Then my rating is biased because uh, you know, psychologically, I may think that, oh, this is a good cigar. You don't need that. So when you do rating, you remove the cigar band, and the people who do the rating, they normally don't know what cigar it is. Uh, why they do that? Because they don't want it, it to be biased by some information given by the manufacturers, distributors, uh, producers from different country. So the rating will be on a cigar without no band. So when you do Dominican and uh, Nicaraguan cigar rating, you should not have a band. So you don't even know it's not, uh, Nicaraguan and Dominican cigars unless you smoke them. So rating is always the same. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Uh, okay, beautiful place. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, against Cubans, he said, because I answered the question. There is no, nothing against Cubans. It's all the same. Okay, you told me about a Concord game. Are you to do it? A game, no, a sub subscription. Uh, I believe that in order to educate more, that's what I mentioned last time. Do you smoke every day? Yes, I do. Uh, best budgeted cigar, uh, Paul Laraniaga, Petit Coronas is the best budgeted cigar. Vegueros, Centro Gordos, Tapados, Centro Finos, uh, Mañanitas, all budgeted cigar, wonderful cigar. Uh, you also can look into Jose La Pedra, Short Filler, Handmade Cigars, Casadoras, Caballeros. Uh, you can look into Quintero, Short Filler Cigars, uh, Favoritos, for example, uh, Petit Cetros. And also, it's from the premium cigar side, you can look into Cuaba Divinos, Cuaba Tradicionales. Wonderful, wonderful, good value for money. Uh, you can also look into uh, Florentino Elegidos, Short Filler Handmade Cigar. Oh, there is a beautiful cigar I missed. It's uh, Rafael Gonzalez uh, Lonsdale's, a recent addition to the Rafael Gonzalez family, which is a long filler, handmade cigar, comes with a good value for money. So does the Perla. So there are cigars for good value for money. So try those. I was wondering, what else is there? Best budget cigar. Okay, so now let me go back. So many people, I think, are of Leon deleted, so message retracted. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to Instagram a little bit. A beautiful day, um, Robestro Situales. Um, what is the smoke of the day? This is the smoke of the day, uh, Robustro Hermano. Can you speak Arabic? Uh, I know that my name is Arabic, but I don't speak Arabic, I'm sorry. I don't speak Arabic at all. Unfortunately, I did not put my effort too much in learning Arabic language. Somebody got to teach me. That's my next bucket list. I have to learn. I have to learn Arabic. I have to learn Arabic. Can you put Cuban and non-Cuban in the same humidor? Mm. One of the greatest questions, right? 
See, if your wealth allows, you can keep Cuban and non-Cuban in separate hemidos, if your wealth allows. It's not possible for many people in the world that you can buy a huge humidor for Cuba and another huge humidor for non-Cuban. When it comes to electric humidors or big sized cabinet humidors, you can put Cuban and non-Cuban, nothing happens. Why? Because the cigars are often mostly in the boxes, so nothing will happen to it. When it comes to non-Cuban cigars, also one more feature, 99% of the non-Cuban cigars are comes in a cellophane. So it's already covered, it's a breathable cellophane. It's already covered with the aroma, it's already covered with not damaging the wrapper. So these cigars brand, these cigar brands are at most uh, perfect in their packaging. So that's why it comes in a cellophane. Now look at, you only have one humidor. If you only have one humidor, putting non-Cuban and Cuban cigars in the same humidor is not going to affect that much. Because end of the day, if you don't have a humidor for non-Cuban cigars, you're gonna kill it. So what is better? It's better to keep that non-Cuban cigars in the same humidor. Nothing is gonna happen. Cigar is a cigar. So your question would be whether the flavor and aroma is traveling in between from one cigar to another. Not really, not really. Unless your cigar is infused, for instance, there are cigars which people do an infusion with tea, coffee, cognac, and whiskey. Not, those are not a good example even to put in a humidor. Forget about, uh, you know, putting it together with Cuban or non-Cuban. You can't put an infused cigar in a humidor because the humidor will completely smelling that infused fragrance or flavor. You don't need it. So if you have an infused cigar, these days people are infusing it. So you leave it aside. Or some cigars which is aged in certain barrels. There are certain cigars like Arturo Fuente Añejo. It's aged in cognac barrels. It's a wonderful cigar, but it comes in a cellophane. It does, it's not that you take the cigar in your hand immediately, you started to feel all these red fruits and uh, you know, or exceptional qualities of nuts. No, when you smoke them, that's when you get these flavors. Not when you just take a smell out of it. You only get the smell of the wrapper. And it's not even powerful because it's covered in the cellophane. So there's nothing wrong in it if your wealth allows. If your wealth did not allow, put it together, man. In the end of the day, your cigar has to be kept properly. And that's more important, uh, you know, than to keep the non-Cuban outside, like an outcast. No, no, no. Uh, you put it together, cigar is a cigar, you enjoy them. Nothing is going to happen. Okay, what are your plans to broadcast live in Bali? I'm happy. I have to go to Bali for it one of these days. Saludos de una, una saludos, dos, saludos de una cubana desde Roma. Saludos, señorita. Uh, mucho gusto. Best brands of cigar in Middle East. Oh, Middle East. We love exclusive brands. The best brand in Middle East is always Cohiba, is always been like this. The most favorable brand to anyone who living in UAE, Middle East in general, is say Cohiba. And because people love Cohiba and they tend to buy a lot of those. And also Monte Cristo is a favorite cigar for a Middle Eastern community. So does Hoy de Monterrey. From the premium brands, these are the cigars comes in if you tell me best of three cigars which they love to. Trinidad is getting popular, but it's not popular like a Monte Cristo or a Cohiba yet. It will be one day. Uh, now it's getting there. Many people tend to smoke Trinidad, but people prefer a Monte Cristo, a Cohiba, or a Hoy de Monterrey. Uh, people like to start the cigar with a light body taste, especially the people who don't know about cigars, and they come to UAE as a tourist, because to, you, you understand that United Arab Emirates, I know that your question is Middle East, but however, United Arab Emirates, uh, we receive a lot of tourists from around the world. So we're talking about a lot of tourist travelers coming to UAE. So they tend to go to a cigar lounge. They tend to go to a restaurant. They enjoy a wonderful cigar. They want to smoke something a eh, Hoyo. You know, they, they don't want to just jump into a Partagas, for example. So the most favorable in Middle East, I would say, is still Cohiba. Nothing changed. A Monte Cristo. Okay, next question. Can you come in my country and test my country's Havana Club? Where is your country? I can come. Invite me. I'm ready to go. Um, 
All right, thank you for sharing the knowledge. Thank you, gracias. Okay, let me go back to YouTube. Is the dual flame DuPont lighter good for a beginner cigar smoker? Uh, brother, let me ask you, when you say dual flame, you're not talking about uh, Legrand, right? Because Legrand has a soft flame and Legrand also has a jet flame. You have one jet flame when you press it and then when you open it, it's a soft flame. If you're talking about that, it is a great product to have because in the wind or places where you don't have, uh, you know, that calmness of air, you can use the jet flame or you are, you know, you want a precise lighting, you can use a jet flame. But as a, if, if you are in a cigar lounge, the air is completely controlled. Uh, you can use a soft flame. You can take your time and use soft. So Legrand has the power of two different product at the same time in one lighter. So if you look in a jet flame, jet flame, a beginner should always, in my opinion, a beginner should always start with a soft flame. Learn how to do it. Then you get the jet flame, it will be very easy for you. Because if you start with a jet flame, you cannot go back to soft flame. Why? Because your patience level is different. You think that the soft flame work exactly like the jet flame, it's not. The soft flame works very slow. A jet flame works very fast, as you know. So if you start with a jet flame, you don't want to go back to soft flame. You will ditch it. So start with a soft flame. Start with a matchbox. Start with a, a nice soft flame coming from a beautiful lighter. Then, time to time, try the jet flame. It works. But nothing wrong in uh, using both, okay? Because many people still believe that a cigar should be only lit with a cedar spill. Still believe it. I know that it is one of the best practices to have. It is one of the best thing to do for a cigar smoker. However, you can use jet flame, you can use soft flame, you can use matchstick, but make sure you don't uh, touch the flame. You don't make the cigar open to the phosphorus part of it. Because you have to, when you, when you do the matchbox, one scratch, the phosphorus on the matchstick has to burn away. Then you can start lighting it. That's the only rule. But try with a soft flame in the beginning. You will be happy, believe me. Mm. Uh, Radical is asking me a very nice question. What are, what are the three Chibas, I believe that you're talking about Cohibas, that you enjoy the most? Wow. The three Cohibas that I enjoy the most is a wonderful question, man. There are so many Cohibas there, beautiful ones. Okay. Number one on my, uh, my mind, because it's all about what comes in my mind, right? Because that, makes, that means that it's memorable for me. So the best cigar comes in my mind is an Esplendido, a Cohiba Esplendido, a Julieta number two size, a beautiful cigar. Another one comes in my mind, definitely a Vejique. Uh, I would prefer a 54 out of 52 and 56. Oh, I gotta choose one more. That's tough, man, that's tough. I have so many in my mind. I have a Lancero in my mind and I have Siglo 6 in my mind. Oh, I don't wanna cancel Lancero, but I don't wanna cancel Siglo 6 either. Oh man, this is a tough question. Okay, instead of three, ask me four. So I'll tell you the four. The Lancero, Siglo 6, Bejique, and a wonderful Cueva Splendido. Forgive me, ask me four, no three. It's too tight, it's too tight. Radical, thank you. Uh, Lazarus, uh, what is the average price for a good quality cigar? Uh, you have to separate it with the Cuban and non-Cuban and Dominican and every other, every other country. If you look into the Cuban cigar brand, an affordable, good, value for money, handmade cigars, not just a cigar. A handmade cigar will cost you $15. That could be the price of a good uh, handmade cigar. You can get a Vegueros, you can get a Paul Arañaga, you can get a Hidorce, uh, you can get a Rafael Gonzalez as I mentioned earlier. So you have a lot of options right in, right in front of you. Mm. 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, sometimes, especially towards the end of a cigar, I get a strange taste of marzipan. Is it because I'm pulling too much heat through it or have torched the cigar too much? I don't think it is torched. Um, I, don't think, I don't think so. If you think marzipan taste is a bad taste, then you are smoking too fast. Why I said that? Because marzipan for many people is amazing. It's a great taste. So if every cigar is getting you that flavor or that taste, I believe that probably you are smoking in the same manner all the cigars, right? So I want to ask you that question back to you. How long it takes for you to finish a Robusto cigar, a 124 millimeter by 50 ring size? How long it takes for you? Normally, you can take a 45 minutes to one hour, one hour plus, no problem. But then if you're smoking it within 20 minutes, then I'm happy that you're getting marzipan. It should be something else. <laughs> I'm talking about something bad taste you should get. If you smoke too fast, you get uh, burnt taste. If you smoke so slow, you get wonderful taste from the tobacco. So remember this, a cigar has to be smoked with utmost uh, slowness. I would say slowness. I don't know if it's the right word. This is, this is how, I, how I rate the slowness of a cigar. I just took a puff, okay? You've seen it. I just took a puff. I'm able to hold it. You see? That should be the heat on the foot of the cigar. That's it. If you're smoking too fast, you are not able to hold it here, especially a thin ring, ring size cigar. You will not be able to hold it like this. You have to smoke very slow. You see, that should be the heat maximum on your foot of the cigar. And that's, that's, that's the way you should smoke. You should not smoke faster. So if you do that, you will not get marzipan Maybe you will get chocolate, so you choose. Array Leon is ignoring. Why are you ignoring my question? What is your question, brother? This is a cigar journey, okay? Any questions about cigar doubts, you are in. But you ask me about something personal, I'm not really answering those questions. So, Arav, ask me about cigar questions. Come on, be a champ. Hello, Turkey, or hermano. How to meet you? I'm Japanese uh, who saw your video and wanted to be uh, such a man. Come to UAE, come to United Arab Emirates and you can meet us. You can smoke a cigar with us. Uh, I have never been to China one of these days, inshallah. I'm thinking about it. Let me go back to Instagram. Because as I mentioned earlier, Instagram people get uh, bored very faster than YouTube people. What do you think about Opus X, cigar effect? Well, remember this. Arturo Fuente, say, Carlito Fuente never made a cigar for a country, except for one country, that is United Arab Emirates. And that cigar is Opus X, Amor del Desierto, love for the desert. And that is made from the Opus X linea. That is made from the Opus X blend. So that made, us believe and feel and understand one of the best cigars out there from Arturo Fuente. Opus X, I do smoke them, I like them. And uh, it's not my go-to-go -go cigar every day because it's a heavy cigar. It's not uh, heavy in the sense, not in terms of too much of uh, strength and is overpowering me, no. But you need, you need a bit of time for it, you know. It's a thick ring gauge cigar. It's a 52 to 54 kind of ring size. So you need some time to enjoy it. So, thank you very much. Malina, placer, un honor. I have so many friends coming online saying hello and it's an honor to see them here. Okay. Nomad Cigars, Khalifa, mi hermano. Good to hear from you, brother. A few more days, I'm back to you, my friend from UAE. We smoke together, you know. Okay, uh, I have a wonderful question from Instagram. Karim, uh, Karim Samir, 
thoughts about the Habanos Connoisseur course? Unfortunately, uh, Instagram is past one hour and uh, YouTube is still here. So, let me continue with the posting it because it's finished. Uh, one hour of Instagram uh, finished very fast. Um, let me post it, then I can be fully focused in YouTube. Okay, done. So that's done. Let me move this to uh, YouTube now. Bonissimo. So I'm going to answer with more focus in uh, YouTube now because I believe that the Instagram give me distraction. Let me remove this because uh, I need to put the speakers on and it's better to have a speaker together. I believe that that is the right thing to do. Here we go. Let me focus more here. I hope you can hear me very well. You see, this is what you have to feel very far. I don't have a soft frame here. So normally when you relight, a soft frame is much better. Okay. Going back. Uh, I'm, I'm a Japanese who saw your video and uh, I, I, I think I mentioned China. That's wrong. So I've been to Japan three, four times and uh, I smoked in um, Rapongi. Uh, in an underground cigar lounge and I also smoked a cigar in a La Casa Lavano in a hotel I don't remember which hotel and also in Daikanyama in one of the restaurants so I remember uh, Japanese love affair on cigars, shoes, style, watches is ex exceptional and next time I'm in Japan definitely I will reach up to you and you will know from me that I'm coming to Japan 100% Yakub is uh, talking to me in a very different language. I believe it's Turkey. Inshallah, soon we will be in Turkey so we can see each other. And, uh, okay. Boda is uh, answering me. Rice is a good example. You don't want it to overwash rice because it becomes soggy. That is the texture, though, not flavor. I love it. You know, I was looking for one ingredient. In my mind, I was thinking about many many vegetables right I, I i was thinking about nuts i was thinking about certain kind of leaves and i don't know the english name of these leaves and certain leaves for example rucola you don't wash too much because you lose a little spice in it and rice is a wonderful example you wash too much it kills it so in order to keep a certain product its flavor and character you cannot wash it too much you, you lose it so fermentation is basically about cleansing and uh, also about enhancing its flavor and balancing it. So if you do it too much, you lose it. And thank you, Boda, for bringing it up. Uh, you, you're, you're very helpful in this. Jasim, I have a question. Cigar questions, brother. Red Bull Bro. It's a Dendu Pond, uh, Le Grand, the best cigar lighter. Okay, uh, I would answer that easy. Dupont has a lighter known as Le Grand. Unfortunately, I don't have it here because I can't bring it here because when I leave from here, they will catch it. They will confiscate it. That's the Indian law. You cannot have a lighter in your hand luggage or in the checked-in luggage. So I don't want to take a risk. I already lost one. There is nothing out there like DuPont, a twin flame, a soft flame with a jet flame. There is nothing in the market. So giving that power to DuPont is one of the best lighters you can buy. It's not that lower price. It's slightly expensive. It starts with the 1,300 euros 
that's the price of uh, Le Grand. So different, different style, different editions, different prices. So in general, that is a very good lighter. Now, when it comes to jet flames, when it comes to uh, the new world lighters, there are so many good lighters. Sycar is a wonderful cutter, uh, sorry, Sycar has a cutter and lighter. The cutter is much better than the lighter, but lighter is also very good. Um, Seaglow lines have cutters and lighters. Their lighters are better than cutters, in my opinion. Another brand, Ellie Blue, their cutters and lighters unanimously are nice. And recently there was this uh, Casa Cubana lighters, I love them because it's always on point, it's perfect, it's sharp, uh, but it's jet flame. So a soft flame and a jet flame, there are no many companies makes a soft flame these days. Uh, a soft flame is primarily for the cigarette users. A cigar soft flame is given to us by very few brands. If you look into it, you can number it in your hands. There are very few companies make a soft flame cigar lighters and one of it is DuPont. So a DuPont soft flame, there is no competition in its aesthetic feel about it, the quality of the flame, the longevity of that particular lighter. There is nothing comparable, unfortunately. You know, there is nothing in the market. But jet flame, there is a lot of players in the market. So imagine if you have both of it in your hand with one lighter, and that's what I'm talking about. A Le Grand, one lighter. You have soft flame and jet flame, but it is not a, you know, you can't use it like, like this. You have to be careful about how you use it. You have to use the particular gas. You have to make sure that it's taken care of very well. You cannot just give it away to your friends. I do because I'm in the cigar industry. And believe me, all my DuPont lighters are filled with scratches and dents and you name it. So I think I answered your question. Which place is the best affordable cigar? Ah, uh, wonderful question. The place where there is no taxes on tobacco. That is the best place to, uh, to get the cigar on a good price. Unfortunately, you know who makes more money from the cigars? It's not the cigar manufacturer. It is not the cigar producers. It's not the cigar distributors. It's not the cigar retailers. It is the government makes more money from the cigars. And they do nothing. They just sit it sit in a small office and they collect cash by export and import and customs and confiscation. Unfortunately, the people who make more money from the tobacco is the taxes. So the country with less taxes is the place where you can find good cigars on a better price. And that's handful of places. Switzerland, for example, uh, you can think about some European countries which have limited taxes. Spain, for instance, they have lower taxes. So Cuba is not the best place to buy the premium cigars anymore. It's the same price as anywhere in the world. But non-premium cigars, you can find uh, good value for money in Cuba. But, you know, we're talking about Cuba. So anything from Cuba is precious, is special. So you don't mind to spend that money. Hello from North Carolina, Caroline, USA. Your videos are the best. Thanks for showing this. Uh, noob to the smoke. Thank you very much. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the love affair. Enjoy the passion. And continue educating yourself on various cigars, cigar etiquettes, uh, cigar uh, accessories, cigar marriages, you name it. So it's a great sport. Sport in the sense not sport. It's a great uh, it's a great uh, lifestyle. I don't call it a hobby. It's not a hobby. Uh, it's a wonderful lifestyle and you will enjoy it. You know, it comes with many good things. Uh, great friendship, uh, great attire. You will be very social and it relaxes you very much. Stress-free and a good sleep. <laughs> Gaurav is asking me, one guy is asking my age, but I'm very particular about this. Why do you ask my age, my ethnicity, uh, who I'm, whom I'm dating, or etc., etc.? It's not important. This channel is dedicated for cigar and its passion. And anything about cigar and its passion, 
you know, you ask me. Otherwise, you have to ask me privately, you know, if you're close to me, of course. So when I meet you, I will tell you, brother. And Gaurav is asking, Chico, I, uh, I, love, the, I love the expression. Chico, which is the best affordable cigar? I answered your question. I answered your question earlier, brother. The best affordable cigars from Cuba. It is uh, Vegueros, Quidorce, Polarañaga, uh, Cuaba, and uh, these are the brands that which comes with a good value for money in the handmade cigar section. If you're looking for short filler handmade, you have Jose La Pedra, you have Quintero, uh, you have uh, Flodicano. Uh, Rafael Gonzalez is a very nice handmade full filler cigars, so you can try that. It's not very powerful. Chu Caprete, the only live I watch. Okay, I'm coming back. I'm coming back once in a week, let's say. Uh, Mania, hello brother, greetings from Greece. Do you have, uh, do you pay attention to temperatures when storing cigars or only the humidity? I love you for that. Listen, as, for as good as humidity, temperature is also very important. Many people forget this and I'm so sorry. People forget it. People think the only thing we require is humidity. No, the temperature is important as well. Believe me, the humidity only works with the temperature. We call it RH. RH means relative humidity. And relative humidity is based on the temperature. So if your temperature is 20 degree, your humidity is let's say 65 to 70. In reality, it's a little bit more than that what is recommended. In 16 to 18 degree temperature, the relative humidity is 65 to 70% for the Cuban cigars. So the moment you increase the temperature, and if you continue the same journey of the humidity in percentage, it does not work, the mathematics is wrong. So you have to reduce the humidity if your temperature is higher. Remember this, Tem where temperature is higher, the humidity is higher. I'm talking about the cigar journey. So when your temperature goes to 22, 23, your humidity naturally goes up. So when you put 65 to 70 in a 22, which is equivalent to 75, so you have to reduce it if your temperature is higher. So the simple rule is this. How can you understand a cigar is good? You take a cigar. Hold your cigar with the thumb and the index finger, okay? The thumb and the index finger. Simply, let me focus here. I hope it's focused. Simply press, you see? It looks like a spring, it comes up. You simply press, it comes up. Soft and springy, soft and springy. That's what a good cigar is. If it is cracking, if it is too soft, I don't have a bad cigar, so I cannot explain to you too soft. So I have a vintage here, even that is perfect. So if it is too soft, too much humidity, problem, reduce humidity. If it is too uh, dry, lower humidity, we have a problem. When normally when the temperature is higher and you keep the cigar in a 65 to 70% mark, the cigar looks wet, it looks softer. So that is the reason the humidity is very high. It's not in 65 anymore. So temperature is very important when it comes to cigars. So make sure your temperature is in the recommended zone. For Cuban cigar, it's 65 to 70% with a uh, relative humidity of a temperature of 16 to 18. And that's how you continue that. I hope I answered it very well. Tell me what is the difference between normal cigars and cigars with a defecto. I don't know what is a cigar with defecto. I think it's defected cigars. Maybe from the factory they discarded it, which means it's a bad cigar. I don't understand your question very well, but I believe that the discarded cigars, the blend is the same, but maybe the balance is wrong, so which makes everything bad. It's like you're cooking a pasta. If you put too much water, you know, the, the pasta is so wet. It's not al dente anymore. So 
you know, you cannot put too much water and so does. You put too much sauce and uh, less pasta, it is not tasty. So the balance is very important. So in order to get the right balance, you have to pay constant attention. So a defective cigar means it has a problem. Maybe construction problem, maybe balance problem. It is defected, it is uh, discarded for a reason. So you don't go and buy them and smoke them, you know, uh, just thinking that that's the same plant. Okay, uh, Munch, I uh, have another question. And do you pay attention to different temperatures for long-term aging at uh, 10 years plus? So opposite to the storage. Yes. So if you want a long-term aging, you reduce the temperature and you also reduce the humidity. It goes hand in hand because as I mentioned, humidity and temperature works together. So if you wanted to have a long aging, the ideal way of storing it for a longer time you bring down the temperature to somewhere below 15 degrees and you also bring down the humidity to below 65%. So that's the rule. You don't continue aging a cigar for 20 years on a level of 65 to 70 because the cigar will start to get moldish at one point. You know, because there is a fluctuation happens. Even if you look into it super careful, there will be a slight fluctuation happens in 10 years time. That is natural. It's impossible for you not to have fluctuation. I'm talking about one degree, two degree in the 65, 70 mark. So what happens, you'll start to get mold. So you have to bring it down less than 65% and the temperature also less than 15 degrees. It will eliminate this problem. And also it is best for the cigars to be aged in that particular um, climate, let's say. Eric, uh, good morning from Cannes, French Rivera. Oh, I love Cannes. One of my dreams is to come for the film festival. I've never been. So one of these days when my favorite actor is opening the Cannes festival, I'm coming. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Lion King, bro, I need a job. I can learn anything. Brother, uh, find out what is the most talented thing in your, ha in your, in your life and then work on it. If you are good in certain things, work on that. And then you will, be, you, will, you will excel in your life. But then, I don't know uh, what kind of job you can do. We can talk about this in private. Okay, Legan Hal is saying, how do you smoke slow, but also keep the cigar lit? Great, great that you put it out. Only one way, brother. Pay attention. Let her feel that you are paying attention and pay attention, not let her feel. Make sure your girl and your cigar is exactly the same. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. It will not go off. She will love you and she will be with you. You see, I'm talking to you. She's getting jealous, but you know, time to time I'm kissing her, so it's fine. What humidity and temperature do you keep your uh, non-aging cigars? My non-aging cigars are in 66 to 67% humidity with a temperature zone of 18. And that's my everyday smoke. It won't, it's not gonna change. When I travel, the temperature go a little bit more higher, but I reduce the humidity in that way, right? Because I have to bring it back to a little bit lower. So in general, it's a good, a good smoke is science, it's not experience, it's just simple science. A perfect enjoyment of a cigar is 66 to 67% humidity because that's when the cigar burns uh, very well. That's when the chemistry of the burning happens, a combustion without relighting, a cigar which, uh, without going too fast in lighting, uh, burning, it works in 66 67 so that's the number you have to keep in mind for your regular smokes or daily smokes. Do you have a tutorial on how to roll a cigar in your hand while lighting? Oh, I don't have a tutorial, but 
I can do a live tutorial if that helps. Okay, here we go. Your fingers. Let me put this here. I'm sure she's gonna get upset because I leave the cigar out from my mouth. So you make sure your four fingers are here and the thumb is here, okay? And the pinky finger, you keep it here. The pinky finger, you keep it here. Now, the constant movement have from the thumb and also the index. So your cigar is held with three fingers, the pinky finger and two other fingers. And your index finger has to be free and your thumb has to be free. Now, hold it. Switch on the lighter first and understand how long is the flame. You cannot simply go attack to it. First, switch on the lighter. Then, you angle it properly. You angle it. All what you do, make sure the lighter is in the static position, in this position. Rotate with the index and the thumb. You see what I'm doing? This is from the front side. I will also show you from the back side. From the back side, it looks like this. So this is how you rotate the cigar and you do out and in, you don't do in and out. So when you burn it, you always have to remember it comes from outer to in because the in will burn naturally. So this is how you rotate your cigar in your hand. Oh, she's not upset, thank God. So Boda, I hope I answered a live tutorial for you. I will do a video for it, so it's good. Uh, Dan Shadow, how can you tell if a cigar is correctly lit? Uh, should the foot be white or black or both? A cigar is correctly hit mostly from few things. One is also the heat on the foot. And when you see a reddish, uh, you don't see that red until you smoke them, right? Because it's always darker in color. You can feel it from the foot like this. This is, uh, I, I need more time to explain this. When you burn it, it shows red, okay? This is not a new cigar, so uh, it, it shows more red. And you will know that the complete food is burned and toasted very well until you take the first puff. The first puff, it has to look black. It does not look red. When you take the puff, it will become red. Look at me. That is a perfect lighting because when you look at it, it's just Slightly red inside, outside is black. When you puff it, it becomes red. That's the perfect light. Sometimes when you take the first puff, the inside area is black, which means it's not burned very well. Sometimes it's already too red in the first place, which means it's too, too much of heat you give, that, uh, give it to that cigar. So you make sure it's charred very well, it's toasted very well. And in the first puff, it will get you a nice red. I hope I answered it. This also I can make another video and you know. So it cannot be white, okay? When you burn the cigar first, you don't see the ash forming. You will see a, a line of ash. It's not even an ash. It's a line of burn, a pencil thin burn of line. And that's what you see, that's it. Bless, much love, thank you brother, hello. Uh, Kareem Samir, I have asked you the connoisseur's uh, course on Instagram, but I didn't get the answer as the live feed stopped. Also, greeting from Egypt, waiting for you to smoke in front of the pyramids. Uh, Gras Hermano, so what I'm doing is, I'm going to have a subscription channel coming soon in uh, YouTube where you will have a one-on-one -on -one personal conversation with me on a weekly basis. 
there are all your questions about the cigars and about the marriages, about the etiquette, I will be answering one on one. So I'm doing that course. You can have a, subscri a subscribed area. I can't do it every day in, in live or in videos. It's tough. Uh, so subscribe and you will, you will, you will uh, hear from me soon about how we're going to do it. There will be an online course. Uh, Thomas, um, when will you play the competition game, please? What is the competition game, brother? I don't understand, Thomas. Which competition are you talking about? I have no idea. Peter Durand, I got the cigars because of you and it's been the best ever. Peter, my man, you made my day. And this is what I wanted to tell the people, that my friends, they start their journey and I'm so greedy in this. I wanted everybody to start their new journey, all the youngsters, because of me. And that, that makes, you know, I feel better. <laughs> but thank, thank you, thank you for listening to me and watching my videos. And I'm happy that you started and I'm sure that it will be a wonderful game uh, of good lifestyle. And thank you very much for this. How can I save my cigars? Oh my God, I have literally another 25 questions here or comments here. Uh, but I can't go more. It's slightly becoming darker, so I have to get in. And I have very few minutes. Let me run faster and choose the questions and immediately give you an answer. Uh, I bought some cigars two months ago. I think it is dry now. Ahmed, if you don't keep the cigars in a humidor and if you don't maintain the temperature, it will become drier. So make sure that you invest in a humidor and keep it in the temperature and the humidity zones I explained. I don't have a cigar case. You don't need a cigar case actually. You can actually, uh, cigar case or cigar humidor. You need a cigar humidor. A cigar case is something which you take the cigar with you to a place. But that you can actually carry it with a portable hum humidified bags. It is just one dollar and you can keep the cigars, three, four, five pieces in it and you can seal it. It's a humidified bag. You can go out to smoke with it. You don't need this fancy expensive pouches. You don't need it. You can actually use the humidified bags if that's what you're asking for. Humidor, you need it. There is no way that you can keep the cigar in a normal box, okay? Peter is asking, leave in the humidor for a few weeks. That's correct. And help, help the cigar come back to its life. Oh, Ahmed confirmed it. I don't have a humidor. I'm sorry, brother. You have to have a humidor. Uh, or get a humidified bags immediately and put the cigars in a humidified bags. It will help. I put them in the freezer. No, Ahmed, no, you don't put the cigar in a freezer. No way, the cigar, the freezer does not have the humidity or the temperature what is required for the cigar journey. You cannot put the cigar in the freezer. You need to buy a humidor. You need to keep a cigar healthy. At least use a Tupperware with a Boveda in it. Tupperware with a Boveda in it. You buy a Tupperware for $20 and then put a 69 Boveda in it. It will help if your cigars are not too much. Okay, but invest in a humidor, consider it please. But no freezer. There is a lot of conversation between Peter and uh, Ahmed, which is very good. Peter is helping me in explaining. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Wild Savannah, Jasim, you should consider visiting Cape Town one day. It is very beautiful and I think uh, you would like it because it has a lot of rich culture to it and also has beautiful valleys and mountains. My, one of my new interview is coming in a few days, uh, done by a South African gentleman who is into fitness, uh, into fitness life, you know, he is, he is a personal coach, etc, uh, etc. Et you will hear, and I, I did an interview and he mentioned the same. I'm thinking about it. I'm soon, I'm thinking about Cape Town. Why not? I love, I love South Africa. And I have a lot of friends from the, from the area.
guys, that's it from me. There are a lot of questions yet. So I gotta go. A big love and a big saludo from all the way from India. And until my next video, until my next live shot, hasta luego. Saludo. <laughs>